Good morning, my name is Gil Ledoux. I've been with uh, Uniwell Products for 28 years. Uh, fortunate to work with a uh, domestic U.S. manufacturer based here in Fort Lauderdale since 1949. And today we're going to discuss the nuances of working with aluminum, repairing aluminum coils. So I'm going to draw your attention to the table here where we have a scrap coil and I've brought some of our welding supplies. I have our traditional oxyacetylene kit. I have here an aerocetylene torch kit and I have a MAP propane torch kit as well. It's important to understand that when working with aluminum, all the same processes, the processes are all the same. Um, it's just a lower temperature. So what I mean by that is you have to find a leak obviously and where you have a leak you usually have oil. You need to clean the surface. Then you need to score the surface and you might use sand cloth or you might use a stainless steel fitting brush. Don't use a brass brush like you use on your battery terminals. It's got to be a stainless steel fitting brush. When you score the surface, you're removing some oxides off of old coil. You're also, more importantly, creating more surface area for the alloy to bond to. Now, when you're working with aluminum, again, it is a lower temperature process. Uh, the challenge that we've had is that everything we've been doing for the last 30 or 40 years has been high temperature, high temperature, high temperature. Copper has a much higher temperature a melting point of almost 2,000 degrees. We've got a torch that is burning at about 5,600 degrees uh, or 2,700 degrees if you're using the acetylene torch. And that coil is going to melt at about 1,200 degrees. So about the same temperature that your standard 15% rod starts to flow, uh, around 1180 to 1400, that coil is already melting. So we're using a different rod with a different composition, obviously, and we're working at a lower temperature range. But again, the same rules apply. Find the leak, clean the surface, score the surface, and then use the appropriate uh, rod meant for that application. What I mean by that is you can bounce around on YouTube and you can find dozens of different uh, rods used to put cans together at the flea market or fix a radiator doesn't necessarily mean it's meant for our application in the refrigeration world. So get that rod from the people that you do business with because you know that the vendors that they use have vetted that product for our application. That's important. So what you're going to see me use here today is a UAB, which is our LumaBraze flux core rod. We actually make it in a coil so there's less waste. And we're going to we're going to take turns doing it with the oxyacetylene, the acetylene, and then the MAP torch. So we've cleaned the surface. We're going to score the surface. We're removing some of the oxides off an of old coil. Uh, more importantly, we're creating more surface area for that alloy to bond to. I'm going to adjust my flame pattern to a slightly carburizing flame. I've feathered the flame a little bit. I'm going to use the tail end of that flame because I don't need 5600 degrees. So I'm going to regulate the heat that way. If the alloy is beating up on the surface, you're, you're heating the alloy before you're heating the surface. So remember, bring that surface up to 850 degrees before introducing your alloy. The challenge is going to be we don't get the color changes like we do in copper, so you can't use those visual cues uh, as an indicator of temperature. 
you're going to have to feel for the temperature instead of looking for the temperature. So put your flame on the, on the coil, pull it back a little bit. You see me doing that, I'm feeling for the temperature. As soon as I feel that alloy drag a little bit and I see it going liquid, now I'm not brushing anymore, now I just feed it and it flows like butter. All right, once you bridge that hole, once you bridge that gap, it's stronger than the metal around it. Okay, now we're going to do the same process using the acetylene torch and then the map torch. These acetylene torches are compact, they're light, they're perfect for residential sizes, so suction lines, inch and an eighth and smaller, this is all you need right here. Easier entry point for your installer base that are coming in green, um, easier to learn with. They tend not to burn up their, their copper fittings. Now, the acetylene will burn, acetylene torch burning at about 2700 degrees, so I can still get myself into trouble with the map or the acetylene torch, but again, a little bit easier to control that heat with 2700 degrees than it is uh, the 5600 degrees. I put a smaller tip on, so instead of the standard number 8 tip, or A8, I'm putting the 3 tip on there, as I did with the oxy -sending. If your alloy is beating up on the tubing or beating up on the metal, you're, you're heating the alloy before you're getting that surface up to 840 degrees, okay? So just bring that surface up, feel for temperature, introduce the alloy. Okay. We're going to use our HT44 MAP torch, MAP, or the propylene uh, replacement gas for MAP. Uh, burns at about 2200 to 2400 degrees. So again, we're going to heat that surface. We're going to introduce the rod to the surface. We're going to ratchet up the difficulty level and we're going to punch a couple holes into the fin pack. What you're going to want to do is, obviously you've got to find that leak, you've got to be able to get to it. You're going to want to peel those fins back and give yourself about an inch to work with. It's not going to look pretty, but remember if the, if the goal is to get that system sealed up and running again, whether you have a, a, a warranty coil on order or this is a permit solution, the fins that I'm going to peel back are going to have a negligible impact on the efficiency of the unit. So while it won't look pretty, try to get over that. Now there's a couple reasons, there's a couple reasons why we're peeling the fins back. A, we have to be able to access that, that leak uh, and prep that surface. At the same time, I don't want that fin material melting and dropping in the hole or the leak that we're trying to fix. And remember that those fins are going to do what they're designed to do. So as I'm heating that tube up, they're sucking that heat away. It's a heat sink and it's sucking that heat away. So if you don't give yourself a little bit of room to work with here, you'll find that uh, what took us five seconds to do over here takes a little bit longer or my alloy is beating up over here. And that's because it's acting as a heat sink and you're not able or not getting that surface uh, hot enough. Okay. And that's why your, your rod will beat up on you. If my leak is here, right by the plate, 
that plate in itself is acting as a big heat sink. So again, if your alloy is beating up, what you want to do is I like to put my torch on that plate and preheat that plate a little bit so it's not acting as a heat sink once I migrate over and try to draw the alloy onto the uh, tubing. Okay, so in that case there, Just preheat that plate a little bit and then work onto your tube and that'll that'll allow that uh, that alloy to flow properly. The aluminum braze alloy is also um, good for joining a copper to aluminum connection. Okay, the same rules apply. Just bear in mind the copper is going to require a little more heat from your torch tip, so you're going to focus more. Uh, time and BTUs on the copper to draw that up to that 850 degrees at the same pace of the aluminum. But if you have a transitional joint uh, from the copper to the aluminum, uh, this, this works fine for that as well. Thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting Uniwell products. It's a family owned and operated manufacturer right here in the United States, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, since 1949.